Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have another very difficult problem for you guys today. Uh, this is actually problem number six on the 2019 IMO. So it's the hardest problem on the International Math Olympiad. Um, so I figured I'd give you guys a warning um, before you just try the problem. Um, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC with in center I. Uh, the in circle is tangent at D, E, and F. Um, the line through D perpendicular to EF meets uh, the in circle omega at R. Uh, AR meets the in circle again at P. And we draw the circumcircles of triangle PCE and PBF, and they meet at a point Q. We want to show that DI, PQ, and the perpendicular through A to AI uh, concur at a point. All right. So just to be honest, I did not actually end up solving this problem, but I kind of got maybe halfway there and I found another solution on the Art of Problem Solving Forum that was um, very, that started out the same way that I started out. So I was at least happy with that. Um, and then I found, um, there's a frequent poster, Jean-Louis Aime, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, from France, but uh, he's a professor and he has um, a lot of very good um, work that he publishes on his own site. And he, so um, my exposition of this is kind of very similar to what he did, although I tweaked it a little bit at one point. Um, so... Yeah, I hope you all enjoy, so I'm going to go over it. Um, but yeah, this is not an easy proof at all. All right, so we want to show that DI, PQ, and this perpendicular to AI through A, we want to show that they all meet at a point. Um, so the way I'm going to try to attempt it here is I'm going to draw that perpendicular. Uh, first, I'm going to draw um, DI, and then I'm going to draw the perpendicular to AI through A and I'm gonna let them meet at a point G. And I wanna show that G um, lies on PQ. That would solve the problem. Um, so what does it mean that G lies on PQ? That means that G is on the radical axis of these two circles. And so if it's on the radical axis of these two circles, then it has to have the same power with respect to each of them. Um, so we want to show that the power of G with respect to circle BPQF is the same as the power of G with respect to CPQE. Uh, All right. And so um, one thing to note, so I'm going to draw um, just some, any random point H on the extension of um, side AB. So the, the perpendicular to AI through A um, so basically line AG, it has to actually bisect angle HAC. And that's, that's pretty easy to see um, because um, basically angle FAE and angle EAH have to add up to 180. So if AI um, and AG add up to 90 and AI bisects angle FAE, then it's easy to see that AG has to bisect angle HAE. Okay, so... So AG is an external angle bisector. And um, that means that the distance from G to, to the line AB, or line HB if you want, is the same as the distance from G to the line AC. Uh, so where does that come into handy? Well, I'm gonna use a theorem called Casey's theorem. Uh, I don't know if it's that common, but I believe it's really useful. So I learned it. Um, I have a book by Roger Johnson called Advanced Euclidean Geometry, and uh, it's a theorem in there. Um, it's, I think it's by John Casey, and it's in a book called A Sequel to Euclid, but it's really useful. So it gives you, for any point, um, it gives a formula for the difference between the powers of that point with respect to two circles. Um, so I want to show that the power of G with respect to those two circles are equal, BPQF and uh, CEQP. Um, 
but it's very hard to compare the powers of G with respect to them directly. Um, so what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to compare, I'm going to first compare the power of G with respect to BFQP with, with the power of G with respect to BFID. So obviously BFID is, is, is a cyclic quadrilateral because angles IFB and IDP are equal to 90. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start out by comparing those two powers. Um, so Casey's theorem says that the difference between the powers of G with respect to those two circles um, is equal to um, the product of the distance between their centers with the with the distance from G to their radical axis. And it happens that um, the radical axis of BFQP and BFID is BF. So the distance from G to that line, um, like I mentioned before, is the same as the G distance from G to AC. So maybe we're getting uh, somewhere here. So I'm going to write this out. Um, so this is what I said. G is on the bisector of angle HAC, so it has to have the same distance from D from the lines A, B, and AC. And then we apply Casey's theorem. I'm just drawing in um, a few more segments. Um, so, so one thing I want to note first is that um, in the circle, in the circumcircle of BFID, um, the midpoint of BI, which is J, that's the center of that circle. And that's um, pretty obvious because since BFI equals BDI or 90 degrees, BI has to be a diameter. So since BI is a diameter, the midpoint J is the center of that circle. Um, so I'm going to move the diagram a little bit just so that J doesn't look like the intersection here. Um, but um, now we can apply Casey's theorem, but I haven't labeled the circumcenter of BFP and of EPC, so I'm going to do that now so that I can apply uh, Casey's theorem. Uh, this is what I just said. J and K are the circumcenters of uh, these two cyclic quadrilaterals, BFID and CEID. Um, so now I'm going to draw on the two circumcenters that I, that I mentioned. Uh, these are the circumcenters of the circles that you can see, BFP and CEP. Um, and so now when I apply Casey's theorem, if you take the difference of the power of G with respect to circle BFP and circle BFID, it's equal to um, the distance to, from G to their radical axis, which is the distance from G to the line PF, which we said was D, times the distance between their two centers, which is LJ. Um, so we have these two equations. Um, and we want to ultimately, we want to show that these first two components, power of G with respect to BFP and power of G with respect to CEP, we want to show that these two are equal, because if that's true, um, then that would mean G is on the radical axis of them, and so it passes through PQ. Okay. Um, but note that G also lies on the segment ID, so it actually has equal power with respect to um, BFID and CEID, because it's on those two circles um, radical axis. So I'm going to write that out here. Um, so basically, since, since these two powers are equal, that means that these two things would be equal. Uh, obviously, D is equal to D. So if we want to show that the two left components are equal, which is what would solve the problem, then we need to show that LJ is equal to MK. So when I was solving the problem myself, I actually got all the way up to this point, and I thought that there had to be um, a simple way to finish after doing all this work, but it turns out that this is only maybe 50%, maybe even less of the way. So this is a really hard problem. Um, so we want to show that LJ equals MK, that would solve the problem. How do we do that? Um, and so this almost kind of comes out of nowhere, but there's a similar triangle and if you see it, it gets you a lot closer. So it turns out that triangle PED is similar to triangle IKM. And so I'm going to try to show that here through an angle chase. Um, so 
we have a lot of perpendicular lines. First of all, so, so I'm just going to write it out a little bit and then talk through it. Um, so I'm going to let MK meet CE at a point N. Um, so first of all, note that um, since M is on, since M is a circumcenter of PEC, it has to lie on the perpendicular bisector of CE. Um, so MN is perpendicular to CE. Um, and, and the three have to be collinear because um, K is the midpoint of IC and N is the midpoint of CE. So MK and N are collinear um, and MN is perpendicular to CE. Um, and so now I'm going to write out exactly how I do the angle chase to show that those two triangles are similar. Um, so first note that MN is parallel to EP. Um, and that's true because K is the midpoint of IC and N is the midpoint of CE. So MN has to be parallel to EP. Um, and also MI has to be perpendicular to EP. Um, that's because um, M and I are the centers of two circles and the line joining their centers has to be perpendicular to the radical axis EP. So that gets that. And then um, MN, like I mentioned, is perpendicular to EC um, because M is on the perpendicular bisector of EC. Um, and so angle IMN, um, basically, I haven't drawn this tiny little intersection point here, but if we call that tiny little intersection point X, let's say, IMN would have to be XMN, but Basically, XMNE is like a cyclic quadrilateral with two right angles um, from the information above. So XMN would have to equal um, PEA, this the external angle um, of, of the opposite angle. So or PEA is the same as AEP. So basically, IMN has to equal angle AEP, and since AE is tangent. Um, to the circle, AEP is actually equal to angle EDP because an inscribed angle is uh, equal to the angle between EP and the tangent. So we have angle IMN, uh, which is also IMK, is equal to angle EDP. Um, and then we can also see that this narrow angle, uh, MIK, is equal to angle PED. And so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, so first, like I mentioned before, IM is perpendicular to EP. And IK is also perpendicular to ED. And again, that's using the fact um, that, so, so, so that... So that's true just because IC has to be parallel to ED. Um, and that's pretty obvious because IDCE is a kite. So if IC is parallel to ED, and IK has to be parallel. Uh, I'm so, then IK has to be perpendicular to ED. So with these two perpendiculars, if you have two lines of one triangle, two um, segments of one triangle um, that are both perpendicular to two segments of another triangle, then the angles between those two segments have to be equal in both the triangles. So angle MIK has to equal angle PED um, because the um, segments are, are pairwise perpendicular, basically. Um, and so now we have enough to conclude that triangle MIK is similar to triangle PED um, because we've shown that two of the uh, corresponding angles are equal. Okay, so um, we showed the narrow angle is equal PED is equal to MIK, and we showed the, the wider angle, EDP, is equal to um, IMK. And so those two triangles are similar, and I feel like that's a pretty key step in solving this problem um, that I didn't see. Okay, so that gives us a couple ratios we can work with, because we wanted to figure out the segment KM. We wanted to show that KM was LJ. So... Um, since they're similar, uh, PE over PD has to equal KI over KM, but KI is CI over 2. So KI over KM is CI over 2KM. 
And then likewise, by the same logic, we have uh, PF over PD is BI over 2LJ. Okay, so we want to show that KM equals LJ. So we're going to want to show um, some kind of equation with PE, PF, BI, and CI. Um, in fact, since we have a PD in both of these, we want to show that basically PE over PF is CI over BI, and that would solve the problem. So how do we get PE over PF? Um, well, it turns out that, um, and I might go over this in another video, but there's this idea of a, a harmonic quadrilateral. So if you look at um, the cyclic quadrilateral RFPE, um, it's, it's inscribed in a circle, but the tangents at F and E pass through the line PR. So that makes it a harmonic quadrilateral is what it's called, and it has a, a special property. So some of you might already know this, um, and if you don't, I think it's worth proving. Um, so, um, so actually, before I get into that, one thing to note is AI has to be perpendicular to EF, um, and that's clearly true because AFIE is a kite. Um, but but AI is parallel to RD from the problem statement. So that's where we, we finally use that fact because um, uh, it's the line through D perpendicular to EF. So since, since AI is perpendicular to EF, um, that means RD has to be perpendicular uh, to EF. Actually, um, it looks like th this was just given in the problem statement. So I don't even think I really needed to derive it. Um, but anyways, um, back to what I was saying before, um, so like, so like I said, um, we want PE over PF and, uh, since it turns out since RF PE is a harmonic quadrilateral, uh, PE over PF is actually RE over RF, um, which is the property that I'm, I said I wasn't going to prove. Um, so we want to see if we can get RE over RF. And it turns out that triangle REF is similar to triangle ICB. And I'm going to show this through an angle chase. Um, so we have angle RFE is equal to um, 90 minus angle uh, FRD. And that's, that's because since RD is perpendicular to EF, RFE is 90 minus FRD. And 90 minus FRD is uh, 90 minus FDB, and that's because DB is tangent to the inner circle. Um, and 90 minus FDB, um, it's easy to see that that's angle IBC because FD is perpendicular to IB. So um, basically we've shown that angle RFE is IBC, and by the same logic, REF is ICB, and so those two triangles have to be similar. Um, so we have RFE is similar to IBC, and so now we can get that ratio that we wanted. Um, so, so BI over CI has to be RF over RE, and then using that harmonic quadrilateral property that I mentioned, uh, that has to be PF over PE. Um, so finally, we can combine all these equations that we have. Um, if you combine... Um, this BI over CI is PF over PE. If you combine it with this equation, you get LK is equal to KM. Um, so, and then once you have LK is equal to KM um, from this, then you can substitute it here. And since we know that these two are equal, then finally we have to get the power of G with respect to BFP is equal to the power of G with respect to CEP. And so that gives us what well, that says that G has to lie on the radical axis of these two circles, which is PQ. Um, and that solves the problem because if G lies on PQ, then that means that DI, PQ, and this perpendicular line all meet. Um, so this is a very tough problem. Um, most of the solutions on the art of problem solving form used inversion. Uh, which I'm not very comfortable with yet, and I'd like to learn a lot more about. 
but I feel like just by reading through those solutions, um, you can get so much smarter in a way. Um, so even though I wasn't able to solve this, uh, maybe it'll be like a starting point for me to, to learn a little bit more. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed uh, the solution. And uh, if you liked the video, um, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see uh, more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.